Not me. Not me. Uh, how often, how often have we found ourselves saying that when uh, given the invitation to, to serve, to take on a challenge, responsibility to make a commitment? Uh, not me. Uh, somebody else. But not me. That's what happens in the gospel text today. In the gospel text today, we have Peter and his encounter with Jesus, which is leading to an invitation for him to be a disciple. And, and uh, Peter goes, uh, uh, not me. Uh, leave me, Jesus. Uh, I am a sinful man. There's a better choices than me, Jesus. Um, not me. He has a way of disqualifying himself. And, and we do that all the time. We find a reason to disqualify ourselves. Uh, Peter's case, it was, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. But we have other things. Sometimes it's, uh, oh, I, I'm not smart enough, I'm not creative enough, I'm not brave enough, I'm not talented enough, I don't have the time. There's something that disqualifies us. And so we go, not me. I understand it's important, good thing to do, you should be about it, but I'm not the one. Now, part of the reason we do it that way is uh, we do this kind of uh, implied uh, humility. Oh, there's better choices than I. And, and it's a great way of saying no without being one who says no, because this false humility that says, oh, no, there's better people than I am. Oh, please, choose somebody else. You will not be really happy with, with me. And it and allows us to say no when we really kind of want to say no because underneath of all of that is a, a, a fear of saying yes. You know, when someone offers a responsibility or commitment or a challenge, the part that one, that seems like a lot of work. That could be really challenging. I really don't want to say no, but if I go, not me, someone else, it allows me to say no in a kind of gentle way with that humility. Now, what's interesting about that is that there's an implied humility, or at least we feel that way, but there's an arrogance behind it. Do you realize there's an implicit arrogance when we go, not me? Because basically what we're saying to the person is, you chose wrong. You chose wrong. If you knew all the information, you would have made a better decision. So I'm going to help you out. Pick somebody else. Because you're wrong in selecting me. It's an arrogance. It really is. And, and what we see in the scripture text, uh, which is really interesting, is uh, what does Jesus do? Um, he doesn't let Peter get away with that. You know, Peter's on his knees. Oh, leave me. I'm a sinful man. <laughs> not me, Lord, not me. And he go, Jesus going, no, nah, it's you, Peter. It really is you. It's you. I want you to get up. You're going to become a fisher of people. It's, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. And you see in that something that, that we need to understand and see for ourselves. You and I, we are called to be disciples. And Jesus picked us for a reason. And he knows what he's doing. Look at the story of Peter. Peter's down on his knees. Oh, not me, Lord, not me, somebody better than me, I'm a sinner. Jesus goes, no, you're the guy. And, and what happens to Peter? He goes on and lives this incredible story as one of the pillars of, of the life of the early church. In Roman tradition, they, the understanding is that Peter is literally the rock on which the church is built. It's an extraordinary story. And yeah, there are a lot of things about Peter that, you know, were foibles and weaknesses and things that, you know, maybe should disqualify, you know, all of those things. 
Clearly, he had a backstory, which he shares with Jesus and saying, uh, if you knew what was in my past, I don't think you'd be picking me. He was also short-tempered. We know that about him. He wasn't always the brightest bulb in the pack, you know. Jesus is talk about his suffering coming up, and, 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 and Peter's the one who goes, uh, uh, it's never going to happen to you. You'll never suffer, Jesus. And Jesus is going, oh, Peter, get behind me, Satan. You just don't get it. He was fearful at times. You know the story? You know he's out. Gets a chance to walk on the water for a little bit until he sees the waves and the storm and he gets scared and he sinks like a stone. And, of course, in the end, he denies Jesus three times. Oh, there were some flaws in the man. But Jesus picked him for a reason. He said, you're the one, Peter. You're the one. Do you understand every one of you here has been called by Christ? And Jesus knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Knows everything about you. And he's going, you're the one. You're the one. And what's extraordinary is that when we accept that Jesus knows what he's doing and say, yes, amazing things happen. Now, one of the wonderful things that this is Scout Sunday, because one of the extraordinary things about scouting is, is that coming up through the ranks, both young men and young women in scouting, is, is this capacity, this wonderful capacity to say yes, rather than not me. That's extraordinary. You come up going, I'm saying yes. One of my great honors, and you say, it's funny to hear you use the language, my decades of being here. You know, I don't think of it that way. In my decades of experience, <laughs> I have gone to my fair share of uh, Eagle Court of Honors, and it is an honor to be a part of it. These extraordinary young men who have gone through it, who again and again and again have said yes, and the amazing things they have done. And of course, the whole history of Eagle Scouts is that, is they are incredible stories of people who have said yes and extraordinary things have happened. Our capacity to say yes to the call of Jesus to be disciples, extraordinary things happen. And in my decades of ministry, have watched again and again, apart from that impulse to go, not me, somebody else, when people have said yes, what has taken place? Now, what's really amazing is to understand that when people have said yes, that indeed Jesus knows what he's doing when he says, you're the one, is that when people have said yes, they are not filled with regrets. Far from it. They feel extraordinarily blessed to step in that which initially scared them. I see that across the board in ministries and life of the church again and again. You know, I really don't have people coming up on what, man, I said yes to being a Sunday school teacher. What was I thinking? That was like the worst thing I could have done. Who, who thought that was a good idea? I don't have people going, I said yes to the choir every Wednesday. I have to go to rehearsal, and then I have to come every Sunday and sing. I, you don't have that. I don't have people going, oh, man, family promise, hanging out with those people that don't have a place to be. And I have to spend an entire evening with them. Why would I ever do that? Even serving on council. Even serving on council, people at the end of it going, longest two years of my life, never will I ever, ever, ever do that. No. In each and every case, you find people go, I'm glad I said yes. I was going to pass on it, not me. But I said yes, and what a blessing it's been. I've helped to raise the young people in our congregation. I've been able to sing God's praise. I have served others, and I have served the church, and it has been wondrous. 
in the end, Jesus knows what he's doing. He does. And he's looking at each one of you and saying, you're the one. I want you. May you and I say yes. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.